Welcome back, Ronin Renegades. I am Lupine Fiasco, this is Daily Fi Gameplay, and today's game will be played against Dash IO. For anyone who is new to the channel, welcome to the Resistance. What we do here is review replays of games that I have played on the Talishar client days or weeks ago, after enough time has passed that I lose my bias and can more objectively judge the quality of my play. I will walk through turn cycles as if I were taking them now while explaining my thought process for the lines that I take, and compare that to what I did at the time of recording. We either learn from my mistakes or reinforce good play patterns, with the overall goal of tightening and optimizing our gameplay in the future to take down paper events like ProQuests or Road to Nationals, and most importantly, walk away with that shiny, shiny cardboard. Without further ado, let's talk about our sideboard and our game plan. Today's game features my Switchblade list. If you would like to check that list out or try it for yourself on Talishar, the Fabry deck link is available in the video description below. While you're down there, if you have not already done so, please consider subscribing to my channel. It is the best free way to support me and to make sure you see daily Fi gameplay in your video feed five days a week. The best paid way to support me is through Patreon, and that link is in the video description as well. Patreon gets you Discord access and exclusive bonuses in the future, but daily Fi gameplay will always be free five days a week. If you can afford to patronize me, I certainly appreciate it. We win the die roll, and we are going to choose to go second in this matchup. That does give Dash the potential to set up some items on turn zero, but that has always been the case when playing against Dash. What we really want is to get the first opportunity to attack Dash's hand size or life total directly, as this is a pure race. Bringing in Mask of the Pouncing Lynx is always correct. Dash has just enough armor to prevent our Mask of Momentum triggers for just long enough that she can kill us. Dash is essentially physical Kano, and these games will never last longer than four turns at most. I'm trying Kadachis in this matchup, as I've been told that Kadachis enable bigger salt the wound turns, and we are looking to break Pouncing Links within the first three turns of the game. But as a result of this game and just some thinking on my own, I don't see how they are any better than Searing Emberblade for getting big salt the wounds. Either attack is four damage when paired with salt the wound. Kadachis are effectively two points of damage each, Emberblade is effectively four points of damage, but Emberblade is harder for Dash to block efficiently. There's an argument that she could use Adaptive Plating with the Galvanize to stop the Emberblade, but she can also use Adaptive Plating without the Galvanize to stop a Kadachi, and if she wants to use her other two pieces of equipment to stop the Emberblade, she needs to use both of them. She could use both pieces of equipment to stop the Kadachis, but for the most part, 3 is greater than 2. Emberblade deals more damage turn to turn than Kadachis do, and I believe that Emberblade Pouncing Lynx is going to be correct against Dash IO. We are bringing our Flamescale Furnace as the life is extremely important, and because these games are so short, it is unlikely that we even get one Tunic activation, much less 2 or 3. Mechanologists do not deal arcane damage, so we are not going to worry about spell void or arcane barrier. This is an older version of the list, so we are boarding out our stab wounds and bringing in Warmonger's Diplomacies. As it is, the current list has Diplomacy in all the time. Diplomacy is very good against Dash IO. It prevents her biggest turns. Her biggest turns will involve High Octane, Toma Fiendal, items off the top of the deck, and if she is forced to choose between war or peace, then she either deals no damage, or she needs to play on rate cards, and if Dash is playing on rate and not extreme over the top, then she loses the game. That's very, very good for us. We should prioritize playing Warmonger's Diplomacy as opposed to pitching it 
or blocking with it. Outside of that, there are no other changes to make. We aren't going to bring in defense reactions as we really want to play our game. We want to make sure that we are high rolling as much as possible. We don't want to block anything that Dash is doing, even to stop a boom grenade, unless we would otherwise lose the game. In the current version of the Switchblade list, Command and Conquer is in the sideboard, and we want to keep it there because Dash uses Crown of Providence. It is unlikely that the first CNC will get value, and it is unlikely that we have time to get value from the second CNC. Our game plan against Dash IO is just racing. That is all we are trying to do. We want to block as little as possible. We are not trying to set up for the future. We want to throw all of our damage at Dash as soon as possible and try to kill her before she kills us. I've been playing a bit of Dash IO recently. Trust me when I say those games are not worth posting, but I have enough experience with the hero now to know how consistently she can dig to her power cards, and she has a lot of power cards. Maximum Velocity, High Octane, Tome of Fiendal, and Spark of Genius are all very good cards, and that doesn't even take into account the random Hadron Collider, Penetration Script, or Boom Grenade off the top of the deck. Dash isn't really even high rolling, she is just playing her deck. And because Phi is not incredibly disruptive, he just needs to do aggro better than Dash does. The current version of the Switchblade list runs Sensor, and Censoring Dash can be very strong. Boom Grenade off the top, High Octane or Tome of Fiendal are all going to be great cards to name. High Octane is probably going to be where we land on a general rule of thumb card, but I will certainly get back to you as I experiment more with it. That said, you know the equipment and the sideboard and the game plan. Let's jump into the replay and see how it all comes together. Our Phoenix Flame goes to discard, and we see that we have drawn into an atrocious hand. We're really hoping that Dash does something aggressive so we can block with some of these blues, but unfortunately all she does is set up items and pass. For our turn now, there isn't a ton we can do generally here. The most damage that we can threaten with our hand, assuming we want to arsenal something, is 7. We can pitch one of our Lava Vein Loyalties to attack with Kadachis. We attack with our Double Strike for 3 damage overall, including our Shugo Trigger. Then we attack with our Soul Bead Strike and Arsenal, a Lava Vein Loyalty. So that's what we're going to do. 7 damage on a 4 card hand is terrible, even taking into consideration that we are arsenaling one of these cards, a three card seven is below rate. So we are really not off to a strong start on the high roll plan. We needed two of these blues to be reds and we would really have something cooking here. We are not going to look to break pouncing links on this turn. Depending on how Dash blocks, we could be looking at a 6 or 7 point Salt the Wound, but because we are on a high roll plan, we are looking for something better than that. Hopefully we draw into an Art of War before this game ends and we can actually resolve it. That is when we would look to break Pouncing Links, especially when Dash is doing blocking. She does let the Soul Bead Strike hit. We aren't going to do anything with that. We will just arsenal our Lava Vein Loyalty and pass it back to her. We draw into a pretty okay hand of cards. Dash, of course, responds with High Octane, floating two resources. So we are really in some trouble here. Twin Drive coming for five with an extra three on top from the Boom Grenade. Then playing a Tome of Fiendal with an action point available is just gross. 
Sparking is also gross. I'm pulling the backup protocol red to either continue this turn or set up for a future turn. Again, I don't want to say we are getting rolled here. I strongly believe this is just what Dash does, but our response to it so far has been atrocious. Pulse Wave Harpoon is the first boosted attack on this chain. We are going to reveal our brand with Cinderclaw as it is also the first card we are going to attack with on our turn. So we are hiding as much information from Dash as possible. Finally, she attacks with maximum velocity. We will block this with our Flamescale Furnace just to make sure we are getting our armor value this game. With her two remaining action points, Dash can just pistol us. And she grabs a Pulse Wave Harpoon with the floating resources to stick into Arsenal. So overall, just a casual 26 damage turn from Dash with a card to stick into Arsenal. Yikes. We are going to play out this hand. Sequencing here does not particularly matter now. It will matter in just a bit, and we'll talk about it. We are looking to grab a Salt Loon this turn. Dash using the Adaptive Plating to block Lava Vein Loyalty, correctly realizing that she needs to get her armor value now and prevent a big Salt the Wound. We aren't going to break this yet. We still want to know how Dash is going to block this turn to know whether we should grab Salt or Lava Burst. As soon as we have three hits on the chain, Salt the Wound becomes equal to Lava Burst in value. That is when we are going to grab a Salt. Blaze Headlong hits. We are going to break Pouncing Links to grab Salt, and this is when sequencing matters. We have a Shuko Trigger on the table. If we pick up and play our Phoenix Flame here, Phoenix Flame gets the Shugo Trigger and attacks for two, which is a clean block with Teclo Foundry Heart. So what I want to do instead is attack with this Salt Wound. Salt gets the Shugo Trigger. Salt is not a clean block. So while this Salt is coming for less potential damage than it would, if we had hit with Phoenix Flame, I don't think Phoenix Flame is going to hit. So we attack with our Salt, we will snap this, then pick up and attack with our Phoenix Flame, then attack with our last Salt the Wound. Just a tiny bit of optimization to try to get a little more damage onto Dash, or to make her blocks a little less efficient. We threaten a lot of damage this turn, even through blocks, but of course our atrocious start is putting us behind. Dash attacking with just a boosted zipper hit, we are not intending to block. We cannot play around Boom Grenade off the top of the deck. Dash drawing into Spark. We'll let her find and crank a Boom Grenade to give her the action point. Outpace here coming for four. We can't block with armor and we don't want to block with hand, so we will just take eight points of damage. Dash breaking the Achilles Accelerator to generate the action point that she missed from Banishing Tome. Boom Grenade off the top of the deck is cranked. Dash coming with Pulse Wave Harpoon that we need to block. We only have two blocks in hand and of Bittering Thorns or Mounting Anger, the card that we value least is Bittering Thorns. So we are going to reveal that to the Pulse Wave Harpoon. We will also block with it and Shuko.
Dash has two pistol shots available with the two action points, assuming that she isn't going to play this last card in hand, and she does not. So we'll block the pistol with Furnace and go to one. At this point, are just hoping that Dash draws a handful of items. The most damage that we can threaten this turn is 11. Unfortunately, that only gets one card from Dash on blocks, and I'm assuming that she can find one point of damage with four cards. Just finishing the game with Kadachis. And once Dash takes it back, that will be the end of it. Overall, I think this was a very cleanly played game. I don't think there is much else I could have done once the game started to turn this into a win. Our first hand was atrocious, and Dash did not give us an opportunity to cycle it. And what really set us up for failure was running the Kadachis instead of the Emberblade. On that first turn, there is an argument that we dealt more damage with the Kadachis than we would have with the Emberblade, but on each subsequent turn, we lost value by having Kadachis instead of Emberblade. Our double salt turn would have been bigger with Emberblade instead of Kadachis and would have been harder for Dash to block. The Mounting Anger Blaze Head long turn would have been better with Emberblade, as we would have pushed one additional point of damage with the Emberblade and been able to pick up and play our Phoenix Flame. And all of this small incremental damage could add up to something that takes an extra card or two from Dash so that she cannot set up a big kill turn, so that now she has to block us, and then we get tempo and beat her. So that's a small change we can make at the start of the game. I will be updating my sideboard guide such that we are bringing Emberblade pouncing links into Dash IO. But for the most part, we lost that because we low rolled, and this is a matchup where we need to draw better than Dash does. And based on the nature of Dash's deck, it is very easy for her to draw well. I do hope you enjoyed this game. I hope you learned something. If you did, be sure to head jab that like button for me. My comments are always open for any questions or feedback, and I will be back tomorrow with more Daily Fi gameplay. Until then, take care.